we're, we're coming to the end of our time, but I, I, I'd like each of our panelists to, as, as we finish up, we, I don't want to leave the session without talking about cost and access, because obviously uh, when the uh, Canada, drug, Canada gets to the end of this process, gets approved, and is commercialized, uh, many of our patients are seeing very high costs for these drugs for yeah. rare diseases and have difficulty obtaining them. So I, wish, I wonder if each of you could, could speak on that, and then any other final thoughts you might have about where you see um, further progress can be made in the drug development process. So I sure. once heard a patient say that they thought the only thing worse than there being no treatment is that there's actually a treatment that they can't access. Um, so I think we have to recognize that all our goals are the same. We want the right therapy to the right patient, and that includes access um, to that therapy. And it takes a village. We all need to be partnering together. We need to build the story early on for the payers. And that includes patient involvement in that piece. We need to show there's value in that therapy and demonstrate that. And we need to do more work around patient preferences, um, additional study, and make sure, again, that we collect their voices into the value proposition to make sure everyone will have access. Yeah, I think that's fair, right? I mean, if you look at it, what are the barriers to treatment? The absence of therapy is a barrier, and we need to work on that. You know, I think the drug discovery process is lengthy, and it has associated costs. I think we focus on the price of medicine, but the end of the day, it's the value of innovation. Um, but I do believe it is understanding how one can access. When, you know, I worked in a community health center patients couldn't access standard of care therapies. It wasn't the most expensive one. I think it's, it's how we find a way to work through that. And I have to say, I look at in, in our environment, I do think the patient voice is a strong voice. I do think that that, but it is a, it is a collaborative effort, right? We work with payers and try to find the value propositions, uh, you know, and how we fund healthcare is a complex topic. Um, but I think my point is I think our goal is to really find the next therapy that we believe can really improve the lives of patients. And then we need to work together to figure out how that can be affordable and accessible. And I would say from the FDA perspective, FDA doesn't set prices of, of yeah, drugs. We, and we don't even really take them, we don't take them into consideration as we're approving them. But what we do understand is that um, if we can help in the pre-competitive space, um, reduce some of the costs associated with drug development, that's a good thing. Yes. Um, and whether that be in the manufacturing process or the cost of the clinical trials programs, we're aware of that and we're trying to do what we can in that area. Um, and we also know that as you bring more drugs into a marketplace to compete with each other, that tends to help con control prices as well. Um, so those are both things that we try to do, but I think access is really um, I don't think we have the problem solved. It's, 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 it's uh, by any means, and it's something that I think we'll continue to, to, to grapple with. I think that's why it's also wonderful to have organizations. Again, I, I, that's why I applaud um, patient organizations, again, such as you know, uh, you know, AAMDS, because they can help people find ways to get access when they may not have have a way uh, other, forward otherwise. So I think that's patient organizations have helped in that tremendously. Um, it's not always, always, not always a solution, but it's a way to, to go. So I, I think that's a, an important thought. And I, I, I think the dialogue, the, I think the, the important thing I would say to a patient newly diagnosed with a bone marrow disorder is, you know, take the time. It, it's, it's a really life-changing moment. But it's, it's worthwhile taking the time after the initial, uh, after initially getting a diagnosis to, to I, I always tell patients, the first time I tell you you have this diagnosis, you're not responsible for remembering anything um, because you're just going to be shaken up. We're going to come back next, and I'm going to tell you everything, but you're not going to remember it maybe. And the next time we're going to come back and have this conversation about what the treatment options are. And I, I would say take the time to explore the treatment options Take the time to do the homework with your family, even though sometimes in aplastic anemia it has to be done quickly, um, and other bone marrow disorders it has to be done quickly. It's worthwhile taking that time, reaching out to patient advocacy groups, reaching out to other patients, to, to providers, to nurses, to, to get the information, um, and that that can really make a difference, um, uh, rather than just rushing uh, into the first thing that that you might hear. Thank you. I would underscore this competition point. I think we're in the second wave of drug development in the bone marrow disease space. 
we now have moved from a place where you, there was not a, a therapy at all to people looking at competitor products, adjuvants. So I do think we're going to see some natural price pressure. Certainly those of us who are looking at the products in other therapeutic areas see that all the time. When you get a competitor in, and Peter, to your point about manufacturing, I think this is as those costs of goods come down, and we can do this with more certainty, scale up from clinical to, to larger sizes, mm -hmm. price will come down. But access remains a big issue that the foundation continues to work with. I want to thank each of our panelists, Peter Marks from the FDA, Jay Baxter from Celgene, Jody Gillen from Pfizer. I hope this has been an informative panel for our audience. We would love to hear from you. Please write the AAMDSIF uh, organization and let us know your thoughts on this. We hope to continue the series and bring together thought leaders in uh, the private sector, government, patient and rare disease groups so that we can address these problems and hope get closer to a time when every patient can get access to the therapies that they need. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.